Hello everybody, and welcome to the Year 6 Mathematics Curriculum for the year 2024. All of these uh, bits of information about what you will be shown if you're in Year 6 in the year 2024 here in Australia all come from the ACARA and SCARSA websites. Uh, the links for those will be in the description of this video. There are three different strands where all the content descriptors, all the things that you'll be taught come from, and they are number and algebra, measurement and geometry, statistics and probability. And these make up the general categories where there will be substrands, smaller categories within them, and within those, the content descriptors, the things you'll be taught. Number and algebra. So every time we go to a new strand, I'll have a little bit of animations. Substrand, there are four different substrands. The first one being number and place value. The first content descriptor is where you have to identify and describe properties of prime numbers, which are those that are, can only be divided by themselves and by one, composite numbers, which are numbers that are not prime, square numbers, which are things like four, because two multiplied by itself makes four, and therefore you could make a little four square grid, or triangular numbers, which will be like a number like six, where you've got three down the bottom, two in the middle, one on the top. Each number gets incrementally smaller bit by bit, and that can make a little triangular shape. So you're trying to find, um, identify and describe properties of those. The second content descriptor, now it looks a bit wordy there, but I'll make it a little bit easier. It's really just about finding ways to be able to do the four operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, with and without digital technologies, which I can just call simply calculators. So it's just practicing those four operations. Investigate everyday situations that use integers, which are round numbers, and then locating the numbers on a number line. So as an example, looking at, let's say, temperature on a number line, it's gone from 25 degrees to 30 degrees, and you can draw a little number line that shows how the temperature has changed. The second substrand, uh, is fractions and decimals. And the first content descriptor here will be comparing fractions with related denominators and locating them on a number line. So fractions that have the same denominators or similar denominators and seeing how they compare in magnitude, its size on a number line. The second content descriptor here is just adding and subtracting fractions. The third one is finding a simple fraction of a quantity where it gives you a whole number so as an example, half of 10 will, of course, be 5. So that's a fraction, half, of a whole number 10. And your answer is also whole number 5. And number 4 is acting, uh, adding and subtracting decimals with and without calculator. And then estimating to check to see if it makes sense, if it's a reasonable answer. There's more uh, fractions and decimals content descriptors. The fifth one is multiplying decimals by whole numbers and also performing division of non-zero whole numbers where the results are terminating decimals with and without calculators. So terminating decimals just mean the decimal ends. It's not continuously the same number unless that number at the end is zero. So as an example, 10 divided by four will be 2.5 and that will be 2.5 and then it will only be zeros after that. So that's an example of a terminating decimal. The sixth content descriptor is multiplying and dividing decimals by powers of 10. So it's really just about how you move the decimal place when you're multiplying or dividing by numbers that begin with one and have a number of zeros after it, such as 10, 100, 1000, and so forth. The final content descriptor is making connections between equivalent fractions, decimals, and percentages. So equivalent fractions just being equal fractions, such as a half and two quarters, and then just looking at how those numbers are the same for decimals and percentages, and just seeing the connections between them. It's really important that you're able to understand this. The third substrand, money and financial mathematics, it really is just involving discounts, 10%, 25%, and 50% discounts. So 10% meaning, you know, something gets 10 cents out of every dollar cheaper. 25% means it's a quarter of the price off and 50% of course means half price off. Uh, so this needs to be done with and without calculators. And then the final substrand within number and algebra 
is continue and create sequences involving whole numbers, fractions and decimals. So it's just really doing number patterns. And then you've got to describe the rule used to create the sequence. So you'll get practice of this with both fractions and decimals. So an easy fraction one would be, you know, a one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, one whole. You're going up by a quarter every time. Um, and then you can have a decimal equivalent, such as 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. You're going up by 0 0.2 every time. The second content descriptor is exploring the use of brackets and the order of operations. So it was called different things in all different places. When I was young, it was called BODMAS, um, so brackets. And then I guess they just put a vowel there, so it makes sense, but it's more high school part, the O, but skipping over, then division, then multiplication, then addition, then subtraction. But like with all content descriptors, I'll have a, I'll have a video specifically about them to explain them fully because this is definitely one of the trickier ones within Year 6 Maths. Okay, the next strand is measurement and geometry, and there are four substrands here as well. The first one is using units of measurement, so it's connecting decimal representations, decimal values, to the metric system. So I guess an example of that would be if something is half a metre, um, 50 centimetres as an example, you could represent it as 0 0.5 metres. Converting between common metric units of length, mass, and capacity. So obviously this is quite important to be able to go from one to another, sort of like I did in that earlier content descriptor. So, you know, 50 centimetres will be 0.5 metres, as an example. And you'll be looking at those uh, within mass and capacity as well. Solving problems with involving comparison of lengths and areas using appropriate units. So it's really just getting you more used to calculating, uh, doing sums that involve lengths and areas. And that should include areas of different looking shapes. It won't all just be a squares, for example. And connecting volume and capacity and their units of measurement. So again, just, uh, you know, making that connection just like I did earlier with length, but you're going to be also doing the same with you know volume and capacity and things like this so as an example if you know there's a bottle that can that holds two liters and it is half full then it's holding one liter or a thousand milliliters so it's about being able to make that connection and lastly interpret and use times tables um, this is something that you should be well versed on at this point it's just um, multiplication and a little bit of memorization to be able to uh, be comfortable with all of them. So uh, the second substrand is shape. It's just constructing simple prism, prisms and pyramids. Um, this would be a better one to actually showcase in a video, which I'll do in future. But really for prisms, you've just got to make sure there's rectangles or triangles um, within uh, actually, no, it should be rectangles, sorry. There will be rectangles between the two bases. So a rectangular prism can have a rectangle on either side or a square on either side and then rectangles connecting them. A triangular prism, triangular faces on the ends and rectangles connecting them. For pyramids, you only have one, one base and everything else, triangles. So as an example, a square pyramid will have a square down the bottom and then it will have four triangles, one connected to each side and they all meet at the top to make the top point of a pyramid. The third substrand within measurement and geometry is location and transformation. And that really involves the combinations of translations, reflections, and rotations with and without the use of digital technologies. I guess in this instance, less so calculators and more so computers where it might show you the Cartesian coordinate system. Translations just means shifting things left or right or up or down. Reflection means like a mirror reflection and rotations means they're rotating in a different way. So for example, if it was like an arrow shape pointing up, if it was rotated 90 degrees uh, clockwise, the arrow would now be facing to the right. And the final content descriptor here is introducing the Cartesian coordinate system using all four quadrants. It's really just putting numbers to the grid that way it's easier to be able to know what is where. Um, this is just f following on 
from translations and reflections and rotations that you're actually putting labels to where things are. Measurement and geometry substrand for geomet geometric reasoning. This is just use, using your like mentally or with or with uh, with digital technologies, figuring out angles and then using the results of the angles you know to figure out angles you don't. Um, definitely a bit trickier than a few other things that we've seen. Um, there will be a video about this that will explain it a lot better. The final strand is statistics and probability. The first substrand out of the two substrands is chance, and that's describing probabilities using fractions, decimals, and percentages. So a real basic one, I guess, would be something like flipping a coin, what's the chance that it will be heads instead of tails? So it's a one in two chance as a fraction, so one half. 0.5 is the decimal we would use for that. And the percentages would, of course, be 50%. There's a 50% chance that happens 50 times that should happen out of 100. And the next one will be conduct chance experiments with both small and large numbers of trials using digital technologies. So there might be programs on the computer or, you know, the ability to be able to record things in a, in a better way, doing a number of trials of chance experiments to see what ends up happening. The third one is comparing observed frequencies across experiments with expected frequencies. So that's really just about making observations between what you'd expect to happen and what actually happens. So like I mentioned with the coins earlier, if you flip a coin a hundred times, you'd expect there to be 50 heads, but maybe you end up doing it and it only ended up heads 47 times. And so then you have the opportunity to observe what happened and then have a bit of a think about why. And the last thing that we'll look at, the final substrand of the final strand is data representation and interpretation. So the first content descriptor is interpreting and comparing data displays, including having column graphs side by side with two categorical variables. So it's really about trying to properly read graphs and getting the information that you can from them. This is obviously really important as statistics will ramp up further in high school, where you're really gonna to have to be able to understand things that you're looking at, even if they don't have a lot of words to be able to talk you through it. And lastly is interpreting secondary data. So it's about finding secondary data and being able to understand what it means and this will be data that can be found in digital media and in other locations. So they were the 27 content descriptors, so the 27 different sorts of things that will be covered in Australian schools for mathematics for year six students in the year 2024. If you do require other information, as I mentioned, there's the ACARA website, the SCARSA website, the links for those will be in the description of this video. And of course, I'll have further videos um, on this channel explaining every single one of these content descriptors in depth. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time.